Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena game to video. Today we're taking a look at another standard deck, this one nicknamed Conclave Counters. It's a green-white plus one plus one counter synergy deck with as one of the centerpieces Conclave Mentor, the new addition from M21, a two mana 2-2 two -two Centaur Cleric saying if one or more plus one plus one counters would be placed on a creature we control, we can put an additional plus one plus one counter on that creature instead. So it doesn't take long for the Conclave Mentor to completely take over the game if it goes unanswered. So definitely a very powerful addition for the archetype. And then when the Conclave Mentor dies, we gain life equal to its power as well. Then taking a look at the rest of the deck, we're also a Gigantha the Wellspring Companion deck. I didn't have to make any compromises to include Gigantha in the Companion slot. Some people like to play Basri, in which case you wouldn't be able to play Gigantha. But personally, I wasn't the biggest fan of uh, Basri in this deck after trying it out, just because the double white mana cost is a little awkward in this deck. And also I found Basri to be at its best when using the minus two ability as opposed to the plus one ability, as we figured out in the white weenie deck that we featured not too long ago. So overall, I get to play Gigantha for free. It's just another five mana, five, five. We get to play in a late game after paying three mana to put it into our hands. Then taking a look at the rest of the deck, at one mana we get to play with Pelt Collector, an amazing one drop in this deck, as a one mana one one, that when we play a bigger creature or a bigger creature dies, it gets a plus one plus one counter, and once it has three or more plus one plus one counters, it also gains Trample, which is great for trampling over any chum blockers. Then we have two X casting cost creatures here with Stone Cold Serpent, with Reach, Trample and Protection from Multicolored, and Ugin's Conjurant that can prevent damage and remove that many plus one plus one counters. So of course Ugin's Conjurant and Stone Cold have great synergy in this deck with all those plus one plus one counter synergies. And we also shouldn't be afraid of playing these for X equals one, since we do have a lot of cards that get better if we have a bit of a board presence already. We've got some Convoke cards too that rely on us having lots of creatures in play. So being able to play these for X equals one is what makes them so flexible. So if we have both of them in our opening hand, we're typically going to play the Ugin's Conjurant for X equals 1, so we can save the Stone Cold to play it for more mana, so it's going to be a bit bigger and the abilities are going to be more relevant on a bigger creature. But uh, yeah, totally fine to play these for X equals 1 sometimes, and then of course we have the flexibility of playing them for more mana later in the game. Then at 2 mana we've got Grateful Apparition, a 2 mana 1-1 one, one spirit with flying, and when the apparition deals combat damage to a player or planeswalker we get to proliferate, meaning that we can choose any permanent in play, and if that permanent has a counter of any kind, we can put an additional one of those counters on that permanent instead. So that works with plus one plus one counters, but that also works with loyalty counters, and we do have a planeswalker in this deck that synergizes with the proliferate as well. So the Grateful Apparition is one of those cards that if it gets out of hand and goes unanswered, can also completely take over the game. And Proliferate also synergizes with Conclave Mentor. So if we do have a Mentor in play and Proliferate, then we get to put two counters instead of just one on our creatures. So that also works quite nicely. And then we also have the full playset of Watley's Raptor as a 2 mana 2-3 with Vigilance that when it enters a battlefield lets us proliferate. And both the Raptor and Conclave Mentor are ways to turn a Pelt Collector into a 3-3 on turn 2 since if we play Pelt Collector into Conclave Mentor, we'll trigger the Pelt Collector and then the Mentor says to put an additional counter on it, and the Raptor will also trigger the Pelt Collector, and then the Proliferate will happen after the Pelt Collector already picked up a plus one plus one counter, turning it into a 3-3, so both of these two drops are great follow-ups to a turn one collector. And then we also have two copies of Wildwood Scourge, another very synergistic card from M21, X and the green for a 0-0 Hydra that enters a battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it. And whenever one or more plus one counters are put on another non-Hydra creature we control, put a plus one plus one counter on Wildwood Scourge. So the Scourge also has a ton of synergy in this deck and can get out of hand very quickly. Great with Proliferate, since that will put a ton of counters on it. And great with all these various effects that put a plus one counter on the entire team. The only drawback is that it doesn't trample, so the opponent can potentially chum block it, even if it is infinitely large. I've had a game where I played a Scourge for X equals 1, and by the end of that same turn, my Scourge was over 30 power, just because of all the proliferate and mentor synergies. Then at 3 mana, we've got two copies of Unbreakable Formation as a way to put a plus one counter on the entire team. Also makes our team indestructible and vigilant until end of turn. We can of course use Formation at instant speed. We will lose out on the benefits from Addendum, but that's a way to potentially make the team indestructible against the sweeper effect. 
And then at 4 mana we've got two copies of Ajani the Great Hearted, which is amazing. The passive ability makes our team vigilant, which is great in any creature matchup if we're trying to race. And then the minus 2 ability puts a plus 1 plus 1 counter on all creatures we control, and we can potentially use that ability two turns in a row, so that can get out of hand very quickly if we have a Conclave Mentor in play, for instance. And then we've got two copies of Basri's Lieutenant, 4 mana 3, 4 with Vigilance and Protection from Multicolored. And when the Lieutenant enters a battlefield, we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature we control. And then when the Lieutenant or another creature we control dies, if it had a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it, we get to make a 2-2 white knight creature token with Vigilance. So this gives us a bit of sweeper insurance, since we are a creature deck that tends to go all in, so we can be vulnerable to sweeper effects. But if we have a Lieutenant in play, at least all those creatures turn into 2-2 knights for the most part. And then finally we've got the full playset of Venerated Loxodon as a 5 mana 4-4 four, four Elephant Cleric with Convoke. And when the Loxodon enters a battlefield, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each creature that convoked it. So this is a reason why we sometimes want to play these Ugin's Conjurance or Stonecoil Serpents for X equals 1. So we've got more creatures in play that can tap for Convoke. And that can also give us these very explosive starts, especially with a Conclave Mentor in play. And then taking a look at the mana base, we've got 9 Plains, 9 Forests, 4 Temple Garden and 2 Temple of Plenty. We want our mana base to be nice and untapped, don't want to mess too much with uh, any tap lands or castles, since we just want to be curving out and our deck is plenty powerful enough if our synergies come together. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play. Our hands, not amazing, but keepable. Play Collector on 1, and then we'll decide if we want to play Stone Quill on 2 here. Ugin's Conjurance. So I guess I don't mind Conjurance on 2. Could have also played 2 1 drops and then next turn Convoked Loxodon. But if they remove one of my creatures, that line is going to be much less uh, exciting. Alright, let's attack for four and then play Serpents. Facing a red-green deck. Don't mind an additional land here. Cycles a raking claws, interesting. And the gruel spellbreaker. Can't quite go Lieutenant into Loxodon, we're short one mana or one creature here to Convoke. Can just Convoke Loxodon. Next turn maybe Formation. Although Lieutenant has protection from the Spellbreaker, which is nice. So I can also just play a 4 or 5 uh, Lieutenant here. Which grows a Belt Collector and then next turn we can uh, maybe Formation. Let's do that. And a Serpent can attack past Spellbreaker too. So multiple creatures with protection from Multicolored, which is going to be good against a Spellbreaker deck. Shadow Spear. That's fine. Ooh, Conclave Mentor. So I can attack first with Lieutenant, which is Vigilance, and then uh, Convoke a Loxodon. And next turn formation should be game over. Course with Crasher, I guess uh, synergizes quite well with Raking Claws. Poem gets in for 5. And they do get a 5-5 five, five token here. But 
but this should be lethal. They block my two largest creatures, they still take more than 20. GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a nice looking hand. So I could go Serpent on one, Raptor on two. I think we're gonna take a different approach. And go Mentor on two, Serpent on three, and then Raptor on four. Steam Vents untapped. Well, hopefully it's just an opt and not a shock. Because I do want to get this Mentor out there. Although I could wait until turn three and then go Mentor plus one mana Serpent. And then now maybe play Scourge. I guess that's reasonable. Because getting immediate value for Mentor is pretty important. The one that's killed without providing any additional counters first. Alright, and they did have the shock. Fair enough. Sprite Dragon. So we'll have a Serpent that can block the Dragon here. But it does still die to shock. A Royal Science, that's fine. Alright, we can have a pretty nice turn here. I think I just have to formation. Send both at the Planeswalker. And now playing Hotlace Raptor is much more impactful as the Mentor has its own plus one counter. Stone Cold Serpent seems like a pretty good card in this matchup. And our opponent concedes. We were gonna have some pretty beefy Conclave Mentors and Stone Cold Serpents, which a blue red deck is gonna struggle with. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with uh, reasonable opening hands. I kind of want to play a Stone Coil for one, but that doesn't let me Apparition on two, so we'll have to just play the Temple instead. Yeah, this deck really doesn't want a lot of tap lands. The two Temples are kind of a necessary evil. I'll bottom the land, even though we'll eventually want land for, for a Jani. Turn one Mountain. Well, this Apparition might get shocked, but... What's my alternative here? Play 2-2 Serpent, and then the Apparition's gonna be kind of off-curve and less likely to connect anyway. But this is gonna die. Nope, did not get shocked. Electrostatic Fields. Well, if they have a shock in hand, they might regret this. So I can go Triple Serpent, or I can go Mentor into a 1-1 one -one Serpent, which is going to be a 2-2, two -two, and then it's going to proliferate, turn into a 4-4. Four -four. That sounds pretty good. And then keep Stone Coils to play after the Mentor. And now they have to decide if they have removal, whether they want to kill Mentor or Apparition. I guess it could potentially kill both. Still leaves us with a 4-4 Serpent. It's gonna shock face. Is this Chandra's Emulator, maybe? Light up the stage. Alright, I'm uh, surprised that they didn't kill the Mentor here. Fair enough. I think I like just playing two... 2-2 two, two Stone Coils instead of a Jani, because if I play a Jani and they were sandbagging removal, then my turn's a lot less exciting. Nah, they don't seem to have a response. And our opponent packs it in. Apparition was going to connect, put two more counters on all the Stone Coils. Next turn a Jani puts two counters on the entire team, and that can kind of snowball out of control. On to the next one. 
All right, we're on the draw with a decent hand. Few ways we can sequence here. I think I'm okay playing Serpent on one since we have so many two mana plays. Yeah, that seems fine. Turn on Healer's Hawk could be a blue-white flyer stack, in which case the apparition's not going to be connecting all that much. But the Stone Coil can definitely hold off some flyers. Not interested in trading just yet. A Watcher of the Spheres on two. It's a scary card. So we probably want to play the Mentor here. And the next turn Raptor is gonna help us proliferate onto the Serpent a bunch. Now the Serpent can block the Watcher of the Spheres just fine. And Loxodon is a great draw. So I think the plan is still Raptor here, plus Temple. And then next turn I can Convoke Loxodon. And I'll take another one. Now it's a little awkward that we have to tap the Serpent if we want to put counters on it with Convoke. But maybe I'll do it once just to make it big enough to hold off all those flyers. Tax with all, so this must be a Rally of Wings. We'll just block the largest creature. Suppose it could be a Sailor, in which case this will also grow and I should just block the Eagle to force the issue on the Rally of Wings. But Rally is much more likely here. The one damage could end up mattering. So we're at eight. So I probably can't afford to tap the Serpent here. Now that we're at eight. So I can play Apparition and then Convoke Loxodon with everything but uh, Serpents. Skycat Sovereign. They don't really have any attacks here. Alright. So I do have the Apparition now as another flyer that could interact. But it can't attack. Points go to 5-5, five, five, so my 4-4s four don't really get to attack either. So I guess we just have to Convoke Loxodon, keep the Flyer and the Reach creature untapped. And a Johnny is an amazing draw here if we can survive a turn. Another Eagle, thanks to the discount from Watcher. And my dad's not dead on board. So this goes there, and then I have to block the Watcher. And I'm taking six. Yeah, that's the forced block here. So, play a Jani. Bones at 30 in the meantime. I think I just get a minus. Gaining life is not gonna save me here. Pretty sure opponent still survives. They can block an 8 powered creature, take 16 plus 11, 27, so they fall to 3. Pretty close, all things considered. The life came from the healer's hawk. Saved them here. GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with uh, great hands. 
Pelt Collector into Mentor, into a Stone Coil maybe. Opponent also with a turn one collector of an overgrown tomb. And I could even convoke a Loxodon next turn if I want. Aha, uh -huh, opponent on uh, an Abzan counters deck. Not sure what black brings to the table. But we're probably about to find out. So, collector into... 1-1 one, one Stone Coil into Loxodon seems great here. That's a lot of power and toughness for turn 3. Another Pelt Collector. Stone Coil. Is your opponent gonna do the same here? Opponent is at 13, so they probably can't tap too many creatures. Yep. And wow, they perfectly murdered our start, but we were lucky enough to be on the play. GG's. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. Not the most exciting hand ever, but we get to play a Stone Coil into Apparition. Hopefully Apparition connects and we get to start growing the Serpents. Cauldron Familiar. All right. So we could maybe see Claim the Firstborn plus a Sacrifice Effect kill Apparition, but otherwise... Not too many flyers in the sacrifice decks. Bastion of Remembrance, alright. So a mono black sacrifice deck it looks like. Unbreakable formation. So I could just play two one one serpents and conjurants, or maybe a one one and a two two. And then hold the temple for next turn and play formation, I guess that's fine. So we'll uh, play a 1-1 one, one Conjurant and a 2-2 two, two Stone Coil. And proliferates. And formation's looking good. Veto, alright, that's scary. They've got a lot of life gain effects here. But a Conclave Mentor. I guess we can wait a turn on formation. Do I send in Stone Coil? If it trades for Lampad or Veto, I'm happy, so sure. Stone Coil does trample, so jumping with Familiar, probably not the best idea. Alright. Could be taking a lot of damage here. Second Bastion. Okay, so we don't have much time before they can drain us to death. Do I even want to attack with the Conjurant? Maybe I just attack with the Tramplers and the Apparition here? Although if I let them untap, they can just sag them to the lamp pad, which is even more damage. So I guess we'll attack anyway. They still insist on blocking the Serpents. Probably want to block the other ones. Alright, so we're gonna deal 16. Then they drain us for... A lot of damage. Yep, 
Yeah, it doesn't take much for them to kill me next turn. Scorpion will do it. Alright, GG's. Yeah, Bastion plus Veto, nice combo, and Lampad also gains life, so synergizes with Veto. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Missing green mana for Scourge, sadly. Don't think I can keep without it. With green mana, I think this would have been fine. This is better. Bottom one, Ajani. And then probably just play a 2 2 Conjurant on two. Not the most mana efficient plays. Ooh, Mentor. Mentor maybe doesn't survive an entire turn, but if it does, it's definitely the better play into a Jani here. Facing a black-white life gain deck, perhaps, as we see the Aerialist. So if I Jani, it might end up dying to the Aerialist next turn but we'll get a minus two activation out of it and then next turn Raptor can proliferate, so... It's fine by me. So they need to gain life pre-combat so the Aerialist can uh, pick up a counter and kill a Johnny. Duskfang Mentor doesn't quite do it. But we won't be able to minus two at least. It looks worse than it is. I guess never mind, I can proliferate with a Raptor and then I can minus two again. That's pretty sweet. And a formation is just a cherry on top here. Hit for 20. Maybe formation was greedy and I could have capped it to save a creature from removal here. Alright, and our opponent packs it in. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, missing white mana. Hmm, with white mana the sand would have been pretty decent, without it I don't think I can keep. Sure we're on the draw, but if we miss for two turns, the sand doesn't really do anything. Alright, this is better. Bottom a Conjurant. Pelt Collector into Stone Coil. Facing a Temple of Silence. Could be a more controlling deck. Which is typically not what we want to play against. Our deck is pretty good at beating up other creature decks since we can usually go over the top. Griffin area, alright, so it's a life gain deck. But they might have Kaya's Wrath in there. Indulging Patrician. Let's just play a 3-3 Stone Coil. And I still get in for one damage, essentially. Could have also tanked before playing Stone Coil and maybe they fear some sort of pump spell and we get in for more damage. There's Vito again. Scary card. Patrician attacks. We'll block. They don't gain any life because of the protection. Which prevents the damage. Alright, points at 6 and we've got a formation coming up. 
both of Kaya can kill a Johnny. And it triggers Ari, Vito, and Patrician too here. Ooh, Raptor, nice. So we can Raptor into formation. And our opponent packs it in. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Lurus deck. And we've got a decent hand here. Multiple ways of getting a 3-3 Pelt Collector onto. Alright, so this is the Mono White and Shanman deck. So this typically turns into a pure race. I'll say it. Take one. At least they don't have much removal for my Conclave Mentor, so that's likely to survive. Now they could have the pump spell here, which would kill my collector, Karametra's Blessing. I think I still got attack here. Can't really miss out on any damage. All that glitters. And they've got Alsaid for protection, although we don't have any removal, so we're pretty happy if they play defensively and keep up mana. Alright, land is good. So. What's my sequence here? I can play a 1-1 Scourge. And the next turn formation is going to be pretty strong. Probably beats playing a Raptor here, even though we could make Collector bigger. It's kind of close, actually. Yeah, let's try the Scourge. We haven't seen Scourge in action yet, so... It's a good excuse to play it here. And we'll send in probably only the Collector. There's enough one mana tricks that punish me attacking with Mentor here. And then I just need more lands. Punt is also splashing green for Season of Growth, most likely. Now if I take 6, next turn this essentially kills me if I don't gain any life, which we are not going to. But I don't really want a chum block. So if they lose Alsate, the all that glitters also shrinks down. So this block, I guess they can sacrifice Alsate and be fine. So yeah, next turn if they can play another enchantments, they can just activate Ginger Brood and kill me. And Aegis will do it. Alright, GG's. All right, we're on the play. What do we think of this one? It's not amazing, but maybe still a keep. If the Scourge dies, we lose our only source of plus one counters, which makes all these proliferate cards much worse. But there's no shortage of plus one counter creatures in the deck we could draw. So probably start with Apparition, turn three, play a Scourge, so we can proliferate right away. And Johnny could be nice. If they thought erasure my scourge, this hand also gets much less exciting. I right, just overgrown tomb tapped, and we drew serpents. All right, so we get to go scourge into one one stone coil. Ah, 
Not too bad. Ideally draw land for a Johnny, which gives us a bit of uh, sweeper insurance too here. See my Triton. Yeah, let's the Johnny minus. Vigilance also pretty key. Don't really want to trade Scourge for Triton, but Serpent is fine. Opponent does take the trade. A rugged Highlands, not sure what's going on over there. Cycles of Void Beckoner. Are they just dead here? So I want to minus and then play another Raptor. So the Hydra picks up more counters. GG's. Alright, well, got to see a bit of the Scourge in action here in the final game. So yeah. Overall, green-white, plus one plus one counters. There's a few ways to build it, definitely a lot of card choices. The one thing I dislike about the deck is the mana base. We do want to curve out and you don't always have the right colors. Sometimes you draw one of the temples at uh, inopportune time and that hurts the deck. So the mana base might be holding back its full potential, but maybe one day we can see a version in Historic where we get access to some Petal Grove as another dual land that comes into play untapped most of the time, which will definitely benefit this deck. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.